a new series of videos that go along with my um, little tutorials showing you guys how to actually um, create designs. I'm going to give you tips on how to get perfect stencil transfers. Okay. So, um, what I'm doing is, um, basically taking the class that I've been touring with and teaching at conventions and, um, teaching in all these different cities and breaking it up into a whole bunch of different videos and just putting it out there online for everybody to watch for free because I mean, there's only so many cities that I can go to and you know, people live all over the place and I'd rather just get this information out there than try and uh, sell classes and travel around. It's time consuming, it's expensive, you know, um, and it's, I mean, it's being online and just doing classes online make way more sense. And um, to me, it just makes more sense to be able to offer these uh, classes out there for free because it will help empower loads of people on how to use stencils and be more proficient with their stencil use, be more confident with their stencil use. Um, people will actually start pulling out their stencils and using them. And um, I'm gonna go through all kinds of different little sponges that I use, what my favorite sponge is, how to load the sponge, okay? Um, that's like the number one problem people have is their sponge is too wet, they get a mucky transfer, the paint goes underneath their stencil. Um, so I'm gonna just start running through some of these tips. I'm gonna try and keep these videos really short uh, so that we can put out lots of them, okay? And not be too boring while we're, you know, going through this content. All right, so loading your sponge here. Um, first of all, this type of sponge right here is my favorite one to use this type of density, it's like a medium density. There's ones that are like really super stiff. There's black ones um, and they're super stiff. I find them too stiff to use. Like they don't pinch down really small. Um, they're great for like drawing with, do you know what I mean? Um, but they're not my favorite for stenciling. These, this type is my favorite for stenciling. Um, there's these kinds, they're popular. But I find that, see how the holes in them, they're, they're more porous. I don't, I mean, I can make it work, but they're not the first ones that I grab in my bag. These are the ones that are like right at the bottom and they're at the end of the third gig of the day. These guys are getting used. Um, again, these are great for like uh, drawing on your face or like, you know, when you're painting, these, these edges are really nice. They're a lot more stiff. They're stiffer than uh, these guys are. Uh, like more of a medium density. So these ones are not my favorite for uh, stenciling. Then, I mean, this kind comes in different shapes. You can get this type of shape. They stain up. I mean, what are you gonna do? Sponges stain. These purple ones are really soft. They, I don't like them as much. I feel like they're better for, again, they kind of sit in my bag till the end. Um, I'd much rather use these to, if I'm just gonna like sponge on a base or like do some like blue sky or something like that, you know? Um, but not so much with the stencils. They just, they don't have, they're just not quite firm enough. These ones are my favorites. Um, who sells them? What brands? I guess, um, Mayron? and paint pal i forget what the paint pal ones are called um and i don't know who else sells these um but these ones are obviously already pre-cut there's some that come in a full circle and then i've i've cut them in half before um and I, I like using them this size because um you can use this corner this corner and then this side i always leave blank and uh, blank meaning no paint on it. I don't paint with that side. This side is more like the side that I do damage control with. So um, these are my favorites. So you'll see me using those often. Um, these, there's these, this shape of one. Can't really see it. Let me put a piece of paper down. This shape. I don't tend to use this for stenciling. I use this to like make perfect circles. You know, you can like load up this bottom end and then you can push it down and spin it and you can make really pretty 
circles if you double load it or if you load it on a rainbow cake and twist it, you know, you can get a nice little rainbowy effect. Um, but I don't use these for uh, stenciling. But they're the ni they're a nice density. They're they're the right density. They're very similar to these guys. But these are my these are my favorites. Okay. Then um, oh, and then there's also like these kinds of sponges. But these are like stipple sponges, not for not for stenciling, obviously, right? Like you can see you can see through them. They're good for making beards and stuff. So you like tap them in the brown paint and then you know go like this, and you got a five o'clock shadow, right? They're for like. Um, pirates or something like that or you can stipple on you can put some like reddish color on there and and stipple it on and it'll look like around a wound or something like that right so not for stenciling not for stenciling okay so when you're gonna load your sponge oh the other sorry finger daubers are also great for uh, stenciling so they've got a hole here and they're called finger daubers you like this you can get them on Amazon, you can get them at face paint supply stores. They're usually about 50 cents each. And they're really durable. Um, I've thrown them in the washing machine before to wash them, like with all my other sponges, or just like on a bar of soap. Go like this on a bar of soap, and like this under the running water to, to wash them. And they last quite a while. Um, let me see if I got an older one here. I don't think I've got like an older one lying around. After a while of using them with stencils, yeah, I don't have an older one. After a while using, like after a long while using them with stencils, sometimes the little sponge starts to tear up a little bit because you're constantly like this against the thing. But they they last they last quite a while, so those are nice. You can get little wooden ones like this with a little teeny tiny sponge on the end. They're, these ones last decently too. Um, eventually the glue uh, falls off of here. I've never actually had a one of these unglue ever. Um, so I've had these ones lasting longer than these ones. And because this is plastic, it looks stain clean. Whereas this, like you can see here, is a dirty fingerprint on there. These ones end up looking dirty pretty fast. But they're super handy because they're tiny. So you can pick up like one tiny little star, right? <laughs> so those are the daubers. These are lollipop blenders, and you can see it's brand new. I don't use these things. Um, I don't feel like I have any control over them. And if you see here, like it's just a sponge wrapped around a, uh, a stick. They sell more expensive ones with like a less disposable looking, um, and they're more of a not quite so round of a shape. Um, but I don't, I feel like, see how it kind of bends? I feel like I don't have control over the sponge to, to use it to stencil. So no, this is not a favorite of mine. There's another kind too. I don't even, I couldn't find a sample to show you in the video, probably cause I don't know, I threw them out or something like that, but they're like on a stick and then they look like a bell shape. Um, like one of those old fashioned bells you'd ring for the butler. <laughs> um, one time I had measles and you know you have to stay in a dark room and and uh and uh and I'm like old that I had measles. I don't know if anybody even has measles anymore, but I remember my mom gave me a bell to ring ding -a -ling -a -ling, when I needed something. So I was supposed to sit in the dark room by myself. <laughs> Anyways, that's what that sponge thing reminds me of. But those ones too, you can't control them. Like it's just a little ball, bell shape on the end of a stick and like there's no control your hands way back here instead of like being in the action where you need it to be around the sponge so i'll maybe i'll like put a picture of one of these bell-shaped ones up around me um in the editing part but yeah those ones are no good for stenciling either so these are the preferred tools of professional face paint stenciling action okay um and now to load them this is my big uh, secret trick here, is that I take my sprayer and I spray my sponge. I, I'm a big fan of, I spray my cake to like paint and stuff like that. Um, but when I'm stenciling, I always start by spraying my sponge. So I'll spray my sponge three times. And when I spray it, I'm about this far away. So what far away is that? That's like the width of my face. My face is probably the same width as your face, if you're a normal, normal humanoid like me. 
hardly normal. Anyways, um, yeah. Like that. Spray it three times, and then what you do is you drag it on your cake until your cake looks dry. See, you can see it's still wet. There's bubbles on there. So you keep doing this until your face paint cake looks like it's dry. Right? No more bubbles on there. And now I got a perfect load on here. I'm not gonna mess this up. To test it, take a look at it. If you squeeze it and paint comes bubbling out of there, you got too much paint on there. That means you got enough paint on there that you can paint their whole face like Spider-Man kind of thing, right? Do you see that, how there's no paint coming out when you squeeze it? So if you can hear it, like gushing in there, I'm putting it up against the microphone right now. I don't know if you can hear that, but you can't really hear it. If you can see it gushing up, if you can hear it making a big wet noise, but that's the trick is I just spray it three times, brush it against the cake really quickly like that. Um, I hold my sponge really close. Look, my fingers are already dirty. You see where my fingers are dirty? That's everywhere that it's touching the sponge. So I hold it really close to the end. And when I'm stenciling, I, you'll see me, I'll pick up like one teeny tiny little space, one little element, and I got this giant sponge, okay? Um, that's because I'm not afraid to really squeeze my sponge because I know that I don't have a ton of paint in there, right? Um, so I'm squeezing it and I'm just using this little teeny tiny little area to grab like just the little chin off the Iron Man kind of thing for the stenciling. Do you know what I mean? Or one little star. Okay. Um, so if you're going to use a stencil, I'll just do it this. So this stencil here really skinny little lines like this, you're gonna have to make sure that you don't have a ton of paint in there because what you're gonna do is do a little test spot first, right? And then you're gonna wanna push and like wiggle in and get in there. If you got too much paint on your sponge, you're gonna have paint going like bubbling up everywhere, okay? I'm holding it down like super firmly here always in like two spots. This, this thing ain't gonna move. My fingertips are turning white because I'm holding it down so tightly, okay? And you get in there and you really wiggle around so you can get that crisp line transfer, right? Okay, so let me show you here what I'm talking about with too much paint. So, there's eight. Usually you just do three sprays, right? So let's go in here and Grab paint, you can see it's like bubbling wet on there. Do you see all those bubbles of wetness, right? This is great. Right now, that would be about what I would do to get a butterfly going. I got enough paint on here to do two butterfly wings. But watch, if I squeeze this, look at all that paint that comes up. Do you see that? You try and put that on a stencil right now, you know exactly what's gonna happen. You're going to get a crummy stencil transfer and then you're going to complain that you never get good stencil transfers and this is why. Look at it. Can you hear it? <laughs> Seriously, that is way too much paint. Okay, so you guys can see that? See, I go to put this on here. Do you see it all bubble up on the stencil too? Like it's just plastic. It's never going to like dry on there or anything like that. It's going to make a big old mess. I never get good stencil transfers, so I don't use the stencils. I never get good stencil transfers, so I don't use the stencils. Okay, that's why, right there, way too much paint. And then look at the other side of your stencil. You got paint all over under on this side too. So even if you like put it down and go to try again, you're gonna make a little mess, right? So, this is another reason why I keep this side really clean is um, I can flip it over and rub off the excess if it's gone through it, okay? So on the job damage control, what do you do if you got way too much paint in there like, like this? Um, I always have a little dry paper, you know, um, blue my fingers are. This color is called Robin's Egg and my fingers look like a couple little Robin's eggs, don't they? Um, I always have a paper towel around to knock off the extra paint. And when you knock off the extra paint, you're gonna have to actually like knock off the paint 
Um, so you're not just like going like this. See how like I, I watch people, they hold their sponge way back over here and then they're going like this. Like how much paint am I really knocking off? See how much paint is in here? Like there's enough paint in here to paint my bathroom walls, okay? So you gotta actually like push the paint out, okay? See how much paint I'm pushing out. Now, let's see if I get a better transfer. Do a little test spot. See, when you do a test spot and you don't actually see any paint like really come out onto your stencil, that's a pretty good indication that you have the right amount of paint in there. It looks like you don't have any paint. If you just tap it and there's nothing that comes on the plastic, that pretty much means that you've got the right amount of paint, meaning that you have very little paint. So do a test spot and then you can rub. Yeah, okay, this is gonna be way better. Yay, fixed, right? <clears throat> this is that little zone from before that was no good. So <clears throat> knock the paint off. Um, don't be afraid to hold it really close to the end. Yes, your fingers are gonna get dirty. If you can't handle it, then don't paint with stencils and get a different job because you're an artist and you're allowed to get your fingers dirty. So, and that's what baby wipes are for, right? Kind of wash our fingers off with them. <laughs> so, whoa, this color stains. I literally found this in a, I was like, oh, I need a, a cake to show on camera. And I went into my overflow. Whoa, this is brutal. Look at that, it stains gnarly. Oh, my thumbnail's blue. Ew, does everybody want to know what brand this is? Where's the lid? Oh, wait. Is it on here? Can you see it? Robin Egg. Chameleon. Rexstrat, wait, made in China. <laughs> pick a pick a spot. Face and body art. Uh, EU FDA made in China. It's a multinational thing here. It says chameleonpaint.com. Look at chameleonpaint.com. Whoa, look how gnarly that is. I would be so pissed if that was on my kid's face and it was that stained. Um but if it's not a chameleon one, I can't find the lid. That's what it says, though. Chameleonpaint.com. Ooh, I don't use chameleon paint that much. Well, pretty much not at all. I use this uh, Superstar Fab stuff because it doesn't stain. <laughs> so let's uh, put the blue stuff aside. And... Um, I'll show you guys maybe with this pink. I have some pink out here. Because that's pretty gnarly. Okay, so loading a dauber. We'll take a finger dauber here. And I'll load the finger dauber. So when I load a finger dauber, I prefer to actually um, get my cake wet than trying to spray this. Because spraying this, you get water going everywhere. At least when you're spraying a sponge, you know you're kind of getting it right on the sponge. So I do spray my cake. The reason why half this cake is missing is because I actually like um, repot my stuff because it's um, handier to repot. So, again, if you push down and you see paint squeezing out the sides. Do you see how like in here, it's, there's no paint. The paint doesn't go all the way down to here. If, if you push it down, let me see if I can get a sideways way of showing you here. Hold on a second, what can I do? I'll do this. So if you push it and you see paint come out the sides, it's too much. It's a nice little indication that do you see what I mean if I push it and paint comes out the sides? See, it's just staying, it's still staying sponge color, right? So that's how you know you've got enough paint on there. Get a transfer, do a little test spot. See how I do a test spot and barely any paint comes on? Because I'm actually gonna really push it and wiggle it. 
perfect, right? Same thing with these little, these little lines. Right? So, um, yeah. Does that make sense? Here, I'll overload this one. Let's put a puddle of water in there. And then I can show you what I mean about having way too much paint on it. Because sometimes you're just not thinking, right? And you put your dauber in there and you pick up all kinds of paint. I hope this is helpful for you guys. You have to let me know. So you can see, see how I got like a little rimmed edge? I know that I'm gonna, trying to purposely mess this up. I'm so used to trying to not mess it up. Okay, see how I've got like, kind of like piles of paint there? So let me see if I can do a nice little side. How did I do that? I think I had it on my other finger. Do it sideways. See, oh yeah, see that puddle of paint that comes out? Do you see how there's like a whole puddle there? Way too much paint, right? Can you see that? Way too much paint. Look at what a mess it is. Look at my blue finger. I got a robin egg finger. <laughs> way too much paint. So way higher likelihood of, see when I do my test spot, it's, um, it's, it's just mucky. It's not a bad transfer. That's a total, I still give that a pass. But do you see it like pouring up and edging out there? That's not a bad transfer. It's not as bad as that. With a sponge, there's a way higher likelihood of messing things up than there is with um, than there is with a finger dauber. So a lot of people prefer the finger dauber. The other nice thing about finger daubers is that you can make cool shapes with them. You know, you can uh, double load them. Let me see here. You can do things like this and double load them and uh, make little whimsical shapes with them. So it's kind of funny. And um, you can like color in bigger areas with a finger dauber too. So they're, they're pretty handy. I didn't, I actually am using them more these days. Um, and even with bigger shapes like this, you can, um, See, this is kind of cool because you can make like that. And looks like an Easter egg, right? <laughs> it's an Easter egg. Yeah, um, I am using finger daubers more and more. I didn't used to, but um, you can get little holders for them. So you can hold like 30 of them or something like that. And um, that comes in handy. This looks pretty wet. That comes in handy because then you can kind of have like a dauber per color, you know. Um, but I hope this was helpful for you guys that you got to see some different uh, different um, ways of loading your sponge um, and testing it. I think the most important is like you give it a little squeeze and if you can see all those bubbles come up in there um, and then spraying your sponge three times and then swiping the cake until it looks dry. Doing the little test so you can see if there's if there's no paint showing up on the stencil. If it's still if it looks like kind of like nothing happened, then you probably it's a good indication that there's the right amount of paint on there, right? So I test it. It doesn't look like anything much is happening, but you can really scrub, right? Push, I got my finger right on the top. I got my fingers, like, see how I'm obviously manipulating it because my finger's all stained and I picked up this blue stainy one again. Oh no, the chameleon people aren't gonna like me. Oh well. <laughs> I don't care. So there you go. That's my tips for getting perfect sponge load and some different kind of sponging tools the finger daubers and my favorite kind of density of sponge to use. So yeah, I really do hope that helped. Um, the stencils I use, this is from the Argyle and Accent kit. Um, this one is from the Fashion Patterns kit. 
So just in case you were curious with that, um, and the circle was from the emoji kit. So all graffiti eyes, stencils, um, yeah. Stay tuned, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's um, Graffiti Eyes is the YouTube channel and I'll be just like posting up all kinds of different uh, videos, uh, how to use stencil videos, making up patterns and stuff like that. And then these kind of tips of getting perfect stencil transfers. So I got loads more tips coming up, um, how to do some damage control, using glitter with our stencils um, and just lots of different uh, other kinds of tips. So. Thanks for watching all the way to the end and um, anything else that I can help you guys out with, leave some comments so I'll know what kind of videos to make, all right? Okay, take care. I love you guys.